We're back. We're I always forget to mute that. <laughs> Only a few more minutes and then we'll get to play. Almost Christmas. Almost. I got a lot to do today and I've been working a lot today. I got two food deliveries. And I need to put everything away. But we're getting there. Let me know when you're here. Because I got some pretties to show you. Like I wasn't kidding when I said I put a lot of fabric in my stash this week. Blocks. Let's see. Oh, like these these bags are heavy. See, I got one. <laughs> and I got two that I have to wrap on comic book cards and put them away. But uh, uh. And everybody who came into the shop this past week, this is all just canvas, just my North Cut canvas to um, fill in what I've already used. This is kind of like my solid, my basic. It's like grunge. The difference is, and why I say I don't like grunge, but I do like North Cut canvas, is. Hopefully you can see this. Let me show you. I don't, it doesn't look dirty to me. Grunge has really dark kind of dirty spots that I just don't like. Northcott canvas doesn't have that. That's why I like Northcott canvas, but that's what's in here. <clears throat> The other one is Patrick Lewis uh, Glisten and my layer cake from um, Marrakesh. But the rest of it's all Glisten and Glisten Holiday, which is metallics. I haven't even opened it yet, but I did open it at the shop. Look, 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 I have to show you how pretty this is. And it looks so much better in all of this fabric in person. Aren't they pretty? These are all two yard cuts that I put in my sketch. I have no idea what I'm doing with them yet. I don't care. That's okay. They're still going in my stash. Because I like them. And of course, the Stonehenge standard that goes with everything. It's so pretty. Piece of fabric. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. I have two patterns in the shop for this line, but I'm not sure I like either one of them. So I haven't decided. And let's see. You saw the layer cake. Now, I showed you pictures of this. But trust me when I tell you, pictures do not do it justice. Not even a little bit. <clears throat> Hey, fellas, how are you? Look at this pretty, pretty, pretty. That, what well, you see that flex, that's pearl. That light, light color is all pearl. Let 
These are just the blues and teals. And they feel so good. They pretty cold, cold and windy in New York. Yeah, some of my relatives say the same thing. We've had um, what do you call it? I don't know what. It's a, just a storm. I guess it's a little, it's a little bit of a a crazy storm. Not quite, not a hurricane and not a tropical storm, but it's been here for two days. It's finally ending this afternoon, and it's been very, very windy and rainy. And yucky. Yes, that's a technical term, by the way. Yucky. All right, let's show you some more pretties and then we can get going. Look, it's so pretty, pretty, pretty. All that, what looks like white, is actually a pearl, luminescent. It's gorgeous. I have no idea what I'm doing with these either, but that's okay. Because I want them. Then we got the holiday metallics. So we've got white and silver. White and gold. Blue and gold. And red and gold. Just some of the fabric that came in last week. It's been crazy. Absolutely crazy. I made sure to get mine. Because I wanted it. How are you doing on the butterfly quilt, Phyllis? After this, I have a lot of work to do. This is the last weekend before Christmas for me. Because my daughter and granddaughter, everybody comes in on Thursday. Still in the box. Tisk, tisk. Well, at least you'll have the videos to fall back on. I have them up on the YouTube page, too in their own folder so it'll be easy for you to watch it's not hard the only thing i figured out last week when i was doing these curves is i redid this circle and applique one on even though i pieced it before because i pieced the wrong color <laughs> instead of this color it should have been this color so oh well hubby let's see well not so good. Hubby goes back to the doctors on Tuesday and they're going to put him in the hospital. We're pretty sure. And do uh, amputate his toes. We're just waiting to see how bad it gets and how much good flesh that they can use as a flap, unfortunately. But on a good note, it's just his toes. So far, the, the vein graft seems to be working and holding. Thank you. I appreciate it. It is what it is, unfortunately. Did I want it to happen now? No. Did I need it to happen now? No. I'm just praying really, really hard that they put him in the hospital and get it done and there's no complications so he can come home for Christmas so we don't have to spend Christmas in the hospital. That's the only thing I want right now. Nothing big, just that one thing. And I'll be happy. Hey, Miss Stephanie. How are you? Thank you. I appreciate it, Stephanie. It is. It, it's good that the, the graph is working, but it's kind of... I feel like I'm holding my breath because the second graph failed in less than two weeks. 
and the first graph failed after six months. So whether this is the end of it and he's fine, no one knows. Because if the graph fails, then we're going to have to do this all over again, probably from the knee down. So I'm just kind of taking it one step at a time and hoping for the best. I am tired, though. I'll tell you, this week has been crazy between doctor's visits and lab tests and it's been crazy in the shop and trying to get the house ready it's just been nuts i'm glad you're doing well and i'm glad you're all caught up with all that trimming there was a lot of trimming for those little squares all right so are we ready to get to it today First thing I'm going to tell you, I did it backwards, but that's all right. <laughs> this is what we're doing. We're going to do two of these because you have, and they're mirror image because you have them on each side of your wing. So we're doing this part right here. And the other part is going to be actually over on this side. This is the top. So the other part will be over here. So they'll be mirror imaged, and her tip is to do the left first and then use that as a um, a map. If you turn it with your seams up, you should be able, let's see if I can show you what we mean. <laughs> And I would definitely recommend laying this one out because it's very easy to get turned around and messed up. Oops, there's a lot of blocks. Lots and lots of blocks. So if we lay this one down, okay, and mirror the blocks, it should come out the same. like playing match game. She said the left, I'm assuming that it's not gonna matter whether I did the right first or the left, at least I hope not, especially since I just picked it all up from being laid out. I don't think it's gonna matter, but we'll know soon enough. Deep, deep, deep. Are you ready for Christmas, Miss Stephanie? I actually started um, wrapping last night. I still have a whole heck of a lot more to wrap, though. I do mean a lot, but at least I started. All right, I think that's it. Oh, that's right, it's Hanukkah for you. I keep forgetting. That's a lot. I give you a lot of credit. Trying to do all both holidays at the same, you know, one right after another is a lot of work. That's how, I think we talked about it last week. That's how I grew up. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start, doesn't really even matter where you start. I usually start in either one of these corners. And what I will do is put, put them together in sections. So I'm going to put these two together with this. Then I'm going to put these two together with this and so on. Kind of like piecing the puzzle. Oops, it helps if your needle's threaded. The time in between is good. I can't imagine knowing what I did this year for for Christmas, having to do both. I don't know if I could do it with everything going on. I really don't think I could. So kudos to you, Miss Stephanie. Now we're just going to iron. This is going to be a lot of back and forth, so hopefully you don't get seasick. I have so much to do today. Um, it's the last weekend before everybody shows up because everybody's coming in Thursday and I'm taking Friday off at the shop. So I got to get the guest room finished, put rest of the decorating boxes away, and do a deep clean. Too much. All right, so we just did this one. Now we're gonna put this one over and sew it. I don't think I have to keep showing you how I'm sewing it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward as far as the machine. So I can look at you and cut down on some of the back and forth. I think the first one took me longer to lay it out. Everybody asks me the same thing, Stephanie. Unfortunately, I'll tell you the same thing I tell everybody else. I don't know any different. Um, I'm the oldest in my family. I had five, I, I had five kids that I raised. I'm a military wife and a business owner. Plus, I'm a care, I was a caregiver for most of my adult life. I don't know how to do it any other way. Just, I mean, the simple fact that my husband in the military, was in the military for so many years, if I didn't do it, it didn't get done. And I don't know. I, I don't know how, honestly, to relax. I, I just don't. If I relax, I sit there and think, okay, I gotta be doing this, I should be doing that, or I could be doing this, and I could be doing that. Now, I'm gonna sew these two together and then sew this one to these two. Plus, my daddy used to tell me all the time that there's time enough to rest when you're dead. So, don't stop. <laughs> it helps, too, that I don't sleep a lot. So I'm up when most people are sleeping. I can usually fall asleep pretty easy. My problem is I don't stay asleep. I get up five or six times a night. If I'm lucky, maybe three. And once my brain kicks in, it's all downhill from there. Because that's when the brain starts going through all of my lists. Of everything I have to do. <laughs> you 
There we go. So these two are done. Now we're gonna connect these. Yeah. I try very, very hard to make sure the seams are nice and neat. So if I miss something, I'll iron it again before we piece it. Did you have any problems so far, Stephanie, with any of these blocks? I know you like curves. I don't like curves. And I don't know if you caught it before you came in, but this one that I did last week, I had to redo the center because I did it in the wrong color. Oh, well, so I got an applique one now. It is what it is. I was about to say, I'm looking forward to relaxing with everybody here, but you know what that's like when you got the kids around. There is no relaxing. And the grandkids, it's a lot of crazy. Love to sit back and watch the crazy? I don't know. Not me. I, I, as much as I say I'm taking time off, there is no time off when everybody's here, especially with my husband not, because normally it's my husband's job to do like Christmas breakfasts and things like that. So I get to do that and cook Christmas dinner this year. <laughs> So you had problems with the curves. Hmm. I always do the bigger and cut it down. Always. It's easier that way. Okay, now that we've got this one together, I'm going to put these two together and sew them to the blanks, blank one. It's going to be a little bit different this year, too, with the new kitchen, because I'm going to be sitting there trying to keep everybody from messing it up. Don't touch the cans. Don't scrub the sink. They're going to all think their mother is nuts. All right. Now we're going to sew these two together. So this, once this is together, sew it to here and then sew that big piece to this. You'll get, you get the idea. It's just the most logical way to do it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you can do it that way, too. I like this quilt because I like anything that has, like, a sampler-type feel to it, so you're not doing the same block over and over again. I get bored easily. So I like samplers a lot. You only have to do a few blocks, although, thankfully, with... You know, the half square and the flying geese weren't too bad, and I have a couple of tricks to make it a little bit easier, but. It's 
So what do you make for dinner? Anything that is um, family tradition? Oh, come on. Ooh. Oh, I know a lot of people that do Yorkshire pudding. I, I have never done that, never had that. But I know a lot of people who do prime rib for Christmas. Me, I'm doing ham, which is traditional. But it's the first ham we've been able to cook in maybe 15 years. So I'm going to show this one to this one now with my dad's... Um, Congestive heart failure, we, we had to stop bringing ham into the house because even though he knew he wasn't supposed to eat it, if it was leftovers, he would eat it anyway. So this is the first year, and I would say at least 15 years that I've had ham for Christmas. And then the other thing that, the other two traditional dishes that I do, which my family loves, is escarole soup, chicken escarole soup with meatballs, with little tiny meatballs for an appetizer or for the first course, and then my honey glazed carrots. Everybody loves my honey glazed carrots. Normally I would be cooking cookies, you know, Italian jelly cookies and all this stuff, but I, it's just too much. I have to draw a line at something. So instead, my daughter is baking some cookies, not the ones that we normally have, and I ordered two pies from one of our local places that I really like. I got a... Yeah, Italian wedding soup, same thing. That's what it is, but the little tiny meatballs. Um, oh, I've got a Reese's pie coming from the local shop. Yum, it is so good. And my daughter surprised me this week with, we normally do pizzas on Friday. And there's a new Italian pizza place that opened. And she got us cannolis and uh, tiramisu, which doesn't sound exotic. But I live in a city, in a town, in a county that has a lot of Italians, but no Italian food. We don't even have Italian bakeries. I'm used to having like a bakery every corner. I mean, yeah, no, we don't have anything. It's like, it's like a food desert. There's nothing. So, I mean, the cannoli wasn't bad. The, I didn't have the cannoli, but the tiramisu wasn't bad. It was just a little different. But it was still pretty good. All right, now that this is sewed, I'm going to sew this to this. I love food. I really do. I shouldn't say that. Not that I, I love food. I like traditional food that I've really missed a lot since I've been in Florida. I took it for granted, you know, because I come from an Italian state, Italian city. I was born in an Italian city but I took it for granted and we're in here I think the closest Italian bakery is 45 minutes to an hour away I haven't tried them yet because I've just been too busy to get down there you know I'm used to being able to go St. Anthony's Feast I'm used to going to New York all the time, Little Italy, where my mother's relatives are and family. I just, there's a lot I miss. A lot. But at least I have to deal with snow, which is huge. Now, ironing the seams. 
I haven't really found any issues with ironing them. Like for here, I'm going to iron it this way because it's less bulky and it doesn't interfere with that much. There are a couple of seams on here that I'll show you where I did a little slot sideways loop kind of thing where I ironed them one way and then decided I need a little piece pushed over just for piecing. But that's it. I think I did that maybe twice. I just ironed my seams wherever they were less bulky. All right, next. So we've got this quadrant done. Now we're going to work on this quadrant. And I'm going to sew these two together. Sew it to this one. Sew these two together. And then sew this to this section. I didn't get to try the cannolis yet. My daughter said they weren't bad, though. My husband liked the pizza. It was probably the first New York-style pizza we've found so far. And it, we've been here in over 10 years. We'll probably order from them again. They're fairly new. But, and they didn't charge us for delivery either because of my It's going to be a different Christmas, that's for sure. All right, that one's there. This one's here. Now I'm going to do, um, let me see something. Yeah. I'm going to sew this one into this one. And then we'll do these two to this one. What else is going on, Miss Stephanie? I'd like our little weekly classes. Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to take two weeks off. Sorry. Next Sunday is Christmas Eve, and the following Sunday, there's, the kids are still here, so things are a little bit messed up. But we'll pick it up. When is that? It'll be... Let's see. I forgot the date. Um, all right, so we're doing it this Sunday. Next Sunday's Christmas Eve, and then the following Sunday is the 31st. So we will pick it up on January 7th, and we'll keep on going. January 7th. What's our next quilt? I was thinking, um, have you seen the barn quilt yet? I'll have to see if I can bring it up for you and I'll show you. It, I like it, but it's kind of like a sampler. There's no fabric, so I haven't figured out what we're going to do. I don't, I don't think that's Laura Holt's barn quilt. Hold on. Let me do a little searchy worchy. I have the pattern. Um, let's see. All 
Let me share this with you and see what you'll see what I mean. All right, come on, Dingling. This is it. Can you see this one? Call it a barn quilt. I like it because it's one, it's stars. And two, it's not a ton of the same exact block, which drives me crazy. Yeah. Yes, Miss Phyllis, you like it too? That's what I think we're going to do. I'll see if I can get the pattern in. It's actually a book before we get once when we before we get this one done. I think it'll be fun and we can use up our stash or in my case, my shop stash that I just brought in. I've been thinking this one might be a nice one to do a glisten in. Yes, I'm petting fabric. Well, let's let's start this one with your stash. How's that? How about how about you, Miss Phyllis? Wanna start your stash? That's yeah, all right, Miss Daphne. You are fine. I'm sure Miss Phyllis appreciates it too. I know I'm an able. Hey, listen, I admit it. I am definitely an enabler. I am fine with that. I like to spread the crazy. Well, good. Do you do like you like the barn quilt enough to do another sew along like this? I like to spread it around. I like everybody to be just as crazy as I am. It's a nice one. Got some pretty stars. And I don't think it's boring because it's not a ton of the same, 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 same. That I'm just not, that's not my favorite type of quote. I think we all have lots of stash, Miss, Miss Phyllis. Lots and lots and lots. Aww. Hey, Rose, how are you? Okay, so now I put these two together. I'm going to sew this part to this one, and then... Once that's done, we're going to sew it to this little edge here, and we'll have another quarter done. How are you, Miss Rose? Getting ready for uh, the holidays? How's it up at Cape Cod? You'll find it funny, Miss Rose. Stephanie thinks I'm an enabler. Happy birthday, Miss Rose. I forgot. It tells you how crazy I've been. I think we're going to do the barn quilt next after this butterfly quilt. Have you gotten any snow up the Cape yet? Not pushy. Ay, ay, ay. I can't believe you say I'm pushy. 
I don't know if I like you, Rose, anymore. You might have to go on my poo-poo list. <laughs> yeah, but that's not my fault. You just happen to have the same taste that I do. That's not being pushy. <laughs> okay, so now we've got this done. We're going to sew this to this and we'll have a whole half done. I just like to buy. I don't have a lot of time to sew, so I just keep on buying. I can't wait. I think after this one is done, while I'm at the shop, I have to try and set it up so I can do videos on the long arm. And I think I'm going to do some quilt videos, actual, of me quilting this. I'm having some fun. The only problem with that is my shop is smaller now, so that when people walk in, I have to unplug the machines and be like a hawk on them to make sure nobody touches nothing. All right. What are you doing for your birthday, Rose? Anything fun? I think after this class or video, I'm going to have me some tiramisu. Now, this one's done. We're going to... Uh, so it to this one. Just a puzzle. This is the, probably one of the few places that you're going to have to be careful with your seams. Not that probably anybody is going to notice, but I notice for myself. So I want to make sure all of these seams line up. put my pins I've probably told you guys this a million times but I'm gonna say it again I put my pins on an angle because I'm gonna start sewing from here down and I that way I can stop with my needle down right in my seam before I take my pin out a lot of the times you can go through all this trouble to pin and just the simple fact of taking or the simple task of taking the pin out is enough to offset your seams a little bit. All right. Oh, I came on threaded again. Did I lose any money? Seems like all of a sudden nobody's chatting. 
Or just wait for me to say something amazing. You need me to show you me actually sewing this time, or are we good? We still got a lot more to sew. I can turn the camera back over here. A pro. No. Mm -mm. I ain't no pro. Ooh. That looks good. I didn't have to use a seam ripper. Look. I ain't no pro, though. I can tell you that for sure. I just been doing it a long time, and I learned from my mistakes. I try to make it as easy as possible. Because I don't like Jack the Ripper. He's a pain. This is good. I'm glad it happened on camera because guess what? The first one I had stitched up a little bit. Look at, look at that. That's so pretty. Once in a while, the sewing gods are in my favor. Look. Look at how good I did. Woohoo. I mean, this one's a tiny bit, but I'm okay. I'm good with that. Now, I'm going to sew these two together. And just along with this one, and then I'm going to sew these two together, sew this to this, and then work over here for almost done. I don't claim to be an, a pro or an expert ever, because I'm always learning, always. I've been doing it a long time. That's the only reason I know as much as I do. That and I'm tenacious. What is it? Tenacious enough to just get it right. Hmm. Nothing is lining up. You mean? Ah, uh, what designs are you working on, Miss Phyllis? Is it a Kimberbell design or is it a design you got from someone else that's really thread intense? I had a couple of customers that came to me this week with issues like that. And it wasn't, sometimes it's the stabilizer. If you have a thread a very thread intense design that you're trying to do and you don't have enough stabilizer, there's nothing that you can do to keep it lined up. The right stabilizer or enough stabilizer is the key for a lot of that, especially on, some, on designs that are really heavy and thread intense. Because if you don't have a strong enough stabilizer and it's got a lot of buildup of threads, it's by nature just going to move your base over one way or the other. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I know. Is that the one with the really pretty star and flowers? Uh, unfortunately what I would tell you then is to try it with some yucky fabric that you're not necessarily you like and have you done hoop sisters are you doing the batting in that one in this sweet pea one try it with battleizer Sometimes with some of those designs that are not hoop sisters, 
where you have the stabilizer and then you put batting on top. If you just switch it out and just do battleizer, which is batting and stabilizer in one, that's enough to, to fix your problem. Okay, then what I would do is baste them together first. It'll save you some aggravation if you have to nudge them one way or the other, if you don't have to unstitch everything. Just do a basting stitch. Instead of a regular stitch. And then once you know it's all together or you know, the two pieces that you're putting together with a basting stitch, they line up, then you can stitch it regularly. Yes, it's a little extra work, but it will save you time in the long run if you're having that much problems lining it up. All right. We just, I just did this one. Now I'm going to sew these two. I haven't had much time to do any. I'm behind on my jubilation because a butterfly and everything else got in the way. But that one I'm got to finish for next year so that I can do a classic. I like that one. We're almost done, and then I'm good work. Okay. So, all right. So, okay. Now, I'm going to sew this one to this one. Then I just have these two to this one. Or maybe I'll do these two first. How's that? And then we'll sew them all together. I'm fast. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. You know how long we've been on. I thought this was going to be a longer spot. Yeah, remember, I've already done one of these because it's going to do two mirror image ones. So I've already done this. It makes me a little bit faster because there's no guesswork. I've already done it once. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? That's why quilts like this are good for doing classes because I can do one block where I show you how to put it together. All right, almost done. Do these, now I'm gonna sew this one to this one. And then we just have the three sets to go together. Then we're gonna sew this to this and this to the hole and it's done. I have so much to do over the next two days. I'm getting a little punchy. I'm tired. Okay. I'm going to sew all three of these quickly. The only one that I'm going to have to worry too much about would be this seam and this seam. Other than that, it's pretty simple.
Even though today is my day off, I'm still got up at the butt crack of dawn. Chris is working a few more days, so I get up to make sure he's all set, get his coffee, get the dogs out. All of that happy. Lonely. I was very happy today, though. I got two food orders delivered without any delays or substitutions. So I count myself. Very lucky. Oh, come on. It's being difficult. It wants to keep on threading my needle. I was very happy I got my deliveries. Sometimes around here, it's like hit or miss, Russian roulette. And whether you're going to get the food that you asked for. And if you do get your delivery, whether it's got everything that you asked for. So I'm very happy. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I only have to do one more food order or pickup before Christmas. And that's just for my vegetables. I don't want to do them too early. Okay, dokie. Every time I think we're almost done, we're not. It's like taking forever. That seam up. That seam. Look, So, did either, any of you have any questions on any of the butterfly quilt that we've done so far? I think the bond quilt is going to be a good one for you guys. I think it's pretty. And there's a lot of different blocks, a lot of star blocks that we can do. Good. You got a goody, goody, goody. Ay, ay, ay. Tired. I got to get my second thing. Get everything done. All right, I'm going to take the silence as no questions. Know where I am if you do get questions. You just have to message me, that's all. All right, so now I'm going to put this one to this one, and finally this one onto the hole, and we will be done. Finito.
There's just one seam in the center that I'm going to worry about. Thank you, Phyllis. I like this one. I think I had fun doing it. I think it was a fun quote. Except for the curves. I don't like no curves. No stinking curves. Oh. All right, one more stitch and we're going to be done. Just got to iron it. And we're going to do the last seam. Now, we're just going to take this one, put it on here. We do have a few seams, and this piece is bigger than I needed it to be, so I'm going to fudge it just a little bit, okay? I'm going to line up as many seams as I can. And let's hope I have good luck this time, like I did the first time. Um, it lines up. I would like it a lot if it did. Hmm. I'm always going It's fun now that all the blocks are done, we can just start putting it all together. It's fast. Once, once you get to this point, it goes fast. And I try to keep my seams down, so if you have to slow down and lift up your foot to make sure your seams stay nice and flat, I highly recommend it, especially if you're going to be doing the quilting yourself, or even if you're going to bring it to a long armor, because your long, long armor will be very happy if you have flat seams. It makes the quilting easier. I'm 
All right, I just have to iron it and it's done. I'll show you what we're going to do. And don't forget, we're going to, um, oops, we're going to take two weeks off. So we're not going to have another class video until the second week in, or the first week in January. Because my family's here and I'm going to have some fun. We're going to Disney next Friday. Oh, I got lucky. Seems actually pretty, pretty good. We're going to go see uh, Mickey's Christmas party on Friday with Aurora. It'll be fun. I need some fun. All right. I'm going to enjoy them very much. So here we go. I, and what I meant by I did pretty good at my seams. Where I wanted them to line up. So now you've got two pieces, two sections that are mirror image. It should be. So that's my tip. Do one side, laying it out. Once you get one piece done, turn it over so that your seams are up. And then just put your pieces right side down like a match game on top. And that'll help you put it together very quickly and easily. And you'll make sure that you get all your pieces lined up. That's it. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a happy and safe holiday with your family and friends. You know where I am. Uh, the shop is open through Thursday next this week coming up and then I'm off. I will be available. I will be checking email and Facebook posts and messenger and all that once in a while throughout that time but i'm gonna have some fun you know where i am if you need me have a great weekend bye thank you phyllis i will thank you rose and stephanie for joining me today